Hey, good morning, everybody. Tuesday the 26th, heading on into work here. Uh, got some sleep this morning. I managed to... Uh, I drank this tea last night that it's... Uh, I wouldn't say that it intoxicates you, but it really, really relaxed me. It's kava. Um, so I had... Uh, I got, I got home and usually when I have like an energy drink, I don't drink them very often, but when I do and it's a little later in the day, I kind of get home kind of amped up and, you know, I was kind of amped up and so I drank this uh, cup of kava tea before settling in and taking, you know, my daughter upstairs to go take a bath um, and I got really relaxed and I just was just like, hey is good and <laughs> and it was very relaxing so um that might be the new nightly ritual for me I don't know I uh, usually don't have problems sleeping uh so that's um that should be like a, a backup plan for nights that I can't sleep the kava stuff's it's not the it's not the best tasting tea but it's it's definitely it's different because it's a different kind of root but just add a couple, little bit of honey and it, it turns out it works out just fine so um, slight update on the uh, job field um, I made a few more steps yesterday in the right direction in regards to looking into um, a career as a park ranger and um, I spoke to there's one school in Washington State that does the training and uh, or that provides the certification class. That that's uh, Skagit Valley Community College, um, and it's a four week class. Uh, you pretty much have to live up there. It's a full time gig. You pretty much you can't be working, which is a huge sacrifice for me because I have a I have a really good paying job, and you know, and I do what I do well, and there's no problems with it. There's no I'm not in jeopardy of losing my job or, you know, not having a good review. I have good rapport with everybody I work with. I'm behind this truck again, aren't I? <sighs> Anytime this guy in front of me, I get behind him. He drives. The thing is, we drive the exact same direction. Um, he gets off before I do, but he drives. I don't know. He drives to the point where it's it teeters on the border between. Uh, not fast enough and almost the speed limit or just the speed limit and it's like you get so many opportunities to pass them up on these back roads but whenever that does come up the opportunity arises you know uh, there's either cars coming this way or it's a double yellow or a solid yellow line you can't pass so it's anyway I left early I should be all right so I looked at the uh, I looked into it I spoke to the guy at the college <clears throat> and I got in touch yesterday with uh, um, one of the chiefs for the state parks, and they're going to get me in contact with somebody that works in human resources uh, to kind of look into, um, you know, because the thing is, for myself, it's, I love what I do, I enjoy it, um, it's very rewarding, I get to have, you know, I, I, I help people, I help turn their lives around, I motivate them, I get them going in the right direction, I help them weigh decisions, apply for jobs, and just kind of, you know, get themselves either back in line or get their lives going. So we're either starting a helping a career or we're fixing someone's life who's been through, you know, addiction and pro uh, problems, jail, legal issues and stuff like that. So um, I deal with a lot of individuals with a lot of problems, uh, but at, at the same time, it's like, we all have problems, it's just that their problems came to the surface or they got caught doing something and um, or they got caught up in the this opioid uh, situation that's just taken over a lot of problems in this country. It's, it's, it's really sad. Like, I remember when heroin was an issue back and when Grunge Rock was around, I remember hearing about heroin and stuff like that, but it's, now it's legit man it's it's a much more of a bigger problem and it's uh it's scary because um you know it's coming to my life personally uh not myself but i mean people that i know 
and it's a scary thing and I've seen a lot of families get ruined because of it I've seen a lot of lives get ruined because of it and it's just a it's a very sad reality and it's um I have a it has a lot to do with personal responsibility but at the same time I I personally uh, push a lot of the blame and guilt onto these uh, pharmaceutical companies that massively produce these said uh, uh, yeah there's no no chance of addiction and, and doctors were handing these things out like it was the, it solved all the problems in the world you go into the doctor like my leg hurts well here here's some pain meds well yeah the pain pills work but my leg still hurts you know pain medication um, doesn't fix anything all it does is it um, it alleviates the pain that you feel temporarily. It doesn't fix the problem. That, you know, the only way to fix a problem is through natural healing or surgical uh, intervention. And so, you know, people don't understand. I think a lot of people just don't understand what pain medication does and is, and what it's primarily used for. It's a it's a temporary solution to a, the pain problem, but it doesn't fix the problem that's causing the pain. Anyway, so I do a lot of that. But the thing that I, I've i really kind of grown into is the fact that I've, you know, growing up, I did see one of my old projects I did as a kid, and it said down, you know, I like, my name's Matt, I like listening to music. Um, this is probably when I'm four or five, and I looked like, I was really cute, I had a really cute bowl cut, um, typical 80s sweater, or, and, uh, you know, I was listening to these headphones, really big bulky headphones that you saw in like the 70s, uh, early 80s, and I had a pair of those on, and it said that I want to be a policeman, um, <laughs> and the way that we've seen things recently, um, police officers, it's a difficult field, I'm not, and the thing is, I don't think I think the majority of police officers are good people that try to do and mean well and the actions that they that they take on the job. Um, but I also know that there's a lot of bad ones. And unfortunately, a lot of those bad ones have made it onto, um, onto television and onto the web and digital media. Uh, because the way that digital media is happening, you know, the iPhones and just the overall connectivity of this United States and the population it's everyone is their own personal media company and it has turned into a lot of the problems that are in society are now amplified and blown up because everyone's connected um, I I really don't think that a lot of problems in this country have gotten worse I think a lot of problems in this country have pretty much always been there but the fact that we're all connected and now it's so instant that we see things all the time um, so instantly that that it, it seems like it's a problem and we jump to conclusions far too quickly. Um, you know, back in the day, if something came up, the media would get a hold of it and they would decide whether or not it was newsworthy or not. Nowadays, it's, it's newsworthy if two people think it's newsworthy. You know, one person thinks it's newsworthy, they post it, and another person thinks it's no, new, uh, newsworthy, um, watches it or reads it and puts it out on the social media and shares it or or posts it to a, a, a blog or a, a website or a Facebook page, something like that. And so it's just, and there's no, there's no accountability to it. There's no, people don't know if things are true, if things are not, and people just assume and so there's there's that whole aspect to it. But the police officers, um, I don't want to be one of the ones that goes out into you know domestic violence issues and things like that. I I want to go out to um, work in the national parks and I want to preserve and educate people on how to enjoy those state parks and national parks. Uh, respectfully and responsibly and to, to teach that uh, to further generations um, I was toying with the idea of going into before I met my my fiance uh, I was toying with the idea <clears throat> of going uh, to rangers or not rangers to become a forest ranger a park ranger and <clears throat> <clears throat> geez, 
if you become a park ranger, <clears throat> something caught there. So if you become a park ranger um, uh, with a non-scientific major or specialization, like a field researcher, a biologist, something like that, um, science was not, it wasn't a bad field for me. It just was something that um, I was more along the lines of interpretive history, um, you know, theor uh, theoretical person, <coughs> and education, <coughs> and talking, and, and presenting things, and teaching people, and helping them understand things, so that was more of my side with it, it was more words, and communication, and, um, and uh, objectivity, opposed to being more scientific, and fact, you know, data, and all that other stuff, um, so... I didn't necessarily want to go into uh, become a biologist. Uh, not to say I can't do it. I believe I'm fully, ca completely capable of doing it. It just was. It just didn't initially grab my attention um, in college. So, so I thought about that, and, I, and it was. I had to weigh the options that you know, being a ranger, it doesn't really make much, and. Um, as much as I do love it, I mean, and, and they say, do something that you love without money or status, and you'll love doing it every single day. And I maybe I'm the kind of person that kind of slipped into that realm where you, you develop these comfortable, this, this sense of comfort in what you do. Like, I don't spend a lot of money. Um, what I do do, however, is, you know, I do, um, I have a lot of hobbies that, you know, aren't the cheapest. Uh, I do a lot of hiking. I get a lot of gear. You know, I do, I've understood and I've adapted the lifestyle that instead of getting an $800, $1,000 iPhone, I'd rather get a plane ticket and some lodging at a specific location to enjoy traveling. And, and so it's, uh, you know, being a police officer for the, for the state parks, uh, you know, you still have to deal with issues that, that come up there, but at the same time, it's, um, the park system in this state and other states, um, and all across the country have changed who I am. You know, it was Glacier National Park that I hiked in while camping at my old job in Montana, and <clears throat> I've forgotten how much I loved it, and how free I felt, and how just, how comforting and how at home I felt in the outdoors. And I love the fact of, you know, being around that atmosphere and helping other people enjoy it as well and teaching them how important it is and, and how preserving these, uh, these land, these landmarks and these, and these, these, uh, these sensitive and, uh, volatile, uh, you know, forests and rivers and geological, um, you know, phenomenons like uh, <clears throat> Yellowstone. I just, I want to preserve that for future generations. And I believe that at the outdoors, so many, a lot of problems would be, would be less so of a problem in society, I believe, if more people just got out more. You know, they hiked more, they camped more, they just got out of their you know, living in cities and surrounded by buildings and concrete all the time and the noise and the connectivity with the phones and, you know, computers and all that stuff. And they just disconnected and went out into, you know, the wilderness and learned how to survive and what it, what it took to survive, you know, a few nights in the backcountry. You know, it's, and when you do that, it becomes your, your major concerns and the only things you really have to be concerned with is if, if you're only taking care of yourself, for example, you know, the most important thing is food, water, um, warmth, and, uh, you know, taking care of yourself, uh, knowing, like, if there are bears out there, are there other, like, snakes, are there other things out there that can harm me, and if so, what do I do, and that's, so life skills, survival skills, learning how to basically know that the things you worry, like, if you worry about your job, or you worry about someone else posting something on Facebook that's derogatory to you, um, someone talking about you, you know, all these other meaning, meaningless problems that come in the world that you get so worked up over and it causes to ruin your day, that when you're in the backcountry, when you're camping, when you're hiking, 
the only thing that's important is, like, if you're hiking, for example, the most important thing are your feet. And, um, you know, your, your knees and taking care of your body and, you know, drinking a lot of fluids, replenishing lost, nutri you know, nutrients and electrolytes <clears throat> and knowing the terrain, knowing how to read a compass, knowing how to read the, you know, topographical map, knowing where you are, not getting lost, keeping warm, you know, engaging, you know, how much time you have left and all those survival skills, those things, when you just do that, everything else is meaningless you know I came back from Hawaii I've come back from camping trips and hiking trips where I felt that a lot of the things that I was sort of becoming anxious about or things that I was worrying about or things that I thought were problems or not you know through hiking the enchantments um, I've posted the video about the hike that I did it was on September 1st 24.1 miles it was 12 hours and the thing is if you would have got caught in the back country in the middle of that that hike, um, and you couldn't complete it or finish it, you'd have to have someone else come bail you out. You'd have to have somebody come and rescue you and save you. And so, taking care of yourself and knowing how to survive in the back country and getting from and, and getting from point A to point B is extremely important. And everything else becomes meaningless. All the other problems that I thought I had or the things that were going on in my life, back burner. That was the most important thing was getting back home to my family and doing what I had to do in order to make that happen. And so that was the most important thing. And so that's what I believe is important for a lot of people. And so I want to encourage, especially minorities um, and kids that are in the inner cities and the kids that aren't exposed to it on a daily basis. Like me, I'm surrounded by nature right now. You know, I drive through it. I work kind of around it. I don't work in, you know... And, uh, and big buildings and and around multi-million dollar structures and I don't live on a I don't work in a, in a big city you know it's uh, I love where I work and I love the areas I'm surrounded by and I, I want to protect it and promote it and encourage kids and people to take it in and to respect it and to understand that it, it is important um, for our society to have these parks and these areas where people can do things recreationally and enjoy the outdoors and, and disconnect and take their kids out there and teach that to them as well. I think that's extremely important. And so going into this was sort of a natural gravitational move for me. You know, I went up to Sunrise to take um, my employees for a hike up there to go to uh, Mount Fremont Lookout, Fire Lookout, and I talked to a park ranger up there and she just, you know, she didn't, she didn't seem like an, uh, she seemed like an introvert initially, but when I talked to her and asked her about a few questions about the area, she lit up, her face just lit up and she just started going off on it. She loved it. She loved talking to people about what she was doing for her life. And she just seemed so passionate about what she was doing. And I thought about it and I was like, you know, I can see how doing something that makes you happy and that you feel is an important part of your life and the world itself and and promoting that with other people and getting other people to respect and understand how important it is and just kind of teaching that and passing it on is extremely important and they're passionate about it and so I felt that doing something like that would be a logical and well-respected move in my life and it makes sense because a lot of people are like oh yeah totally I could t definitely see you doing that and so becoming a state ranger uh, park ranger makes sense to me you know there's four levels uh, you start off at a one become a two and a three and a four and you know it's not the it's not I'm not going to be breaking you know the bank with a lot of in income but it's a uh, it's a passionate job that I be doing what I care about what I love and being in the elements and being outdoors and enjoying the parks and teaching other people about the parks and and doing what I can to promote it because I have I have very good communication skills and I ha I can build rapport with people and I have very I have a very good ability of just creating relationships with people and I think that doing that in that regard uh, doing it with what I love and enjoy would be a wonderful thing and so that's why I want to do that so. Anyway, I'm getting close to 20 minutes here. Uh, I'm going to cut off and um, say that uh, it's been uh, it's been a good day so far, and I can't wait to um, 
to look into this a little bit further to see if anything's going to truly happen. Um, I'm excited about the possibility of doing this as a career, and I, um, I'm excited to see about a possible career change that ultimately can make me happy. And so um, I'll keep you guys posted on how that goes, and uh, I'm really excited. Can't wait to keep you posted and updated on it. Have a great day. I will see you tomorrow morning.